Hi everyone, my name is Leanne and today I'm going to recommend five underrated Irish books to you. Are these books underrated? I don't know. I just feel like I hear fewer people talking about these books compared to some of the other Irish writing that is out there. I feel like Irish fiction and particularly Irish fiction from younger women has been having this real boom for quite a few years now and it doesn't show any signs of slowing down so I think it's a really popular area of fiction at the minute and maybe it's just that I don't hear these books being spoken about as much as some of the other big hitters in this area. It could be that this is just a slightly random selection of books. If you don't know why I'm talking specifically about Irish books not only in this video but basically all of the time recently is because we are in the midst of the Irish Readathon, which runs every single March. This is our seventh year where myself and my co-hosts bring you on board to read more Irish books than you normally would. So if you wanna participate in the Readathon, you only need to read one Irish book. That's it. I read exclusively Irish books in March because I run the Readathon. Like I feel like I, I, I need to really lean in, right? <laughs> but if you're looking for recommendations, if you wanna know more about the Readathon, if you wanna get involved in the conversation, our Discord server is down below. Anyway, if you're just here to get some recommendations, I'm gonna get into it. So for the past few years of the readathon, we have had a group read every year. This year is the fourth time we've had a group read, but our group read last year was None of This Is Serious by Catherine Prasivka. This is a book about Sophie and her friends from college. They've come to the end of their student days and it seems like everyone has it figured out what they're going to do next but Sophie really doesn't. And I think that's an experience that really needs to be discussed more, that kind of limbo you can find yourself in post-college or university, whatever you wanna call it, where you go from having so much structure in your life where everyone's kind of at the same stage to some people really seeming like they've got it figured out and some people not and not having the same structure in your life. It can be really disorientating for people coming out of college life. And that's what Sophie is going through, but she's also particularly navigating her relationship with social media. And I think this book does a great job of dissecting not only how that can be really, really positive for people like Sophie, but how it can quickly turn into something negative if you don't manage that relationship that you have with, you know, the device in your hand. And really this book is an exploration of uncertainty and what that means for young people. Another really interesting thing that this author does in this book is there is a crack in the sky throughout this book and people don't really know what it is, what it means, what's going to happen. There is lots of speculation and conspiracy theories about the crack in the sky online. And I think that was a really fantastic device that the author used to explore the uncertainty that young people felt around the pandemic and how people weren't sure what it meant for their lives moving forward or even their lives in that present moment. I don't love depictions of the pandemic in fiction. And I think because for the most part, people's lives have returned back to normal now, reading about the pandemic wouldn't have the same impact in terms of depicting uncertainty and confusion as using something like this crack in the sky. So I think it was really, really clever. The year prior to that, our group read for the readathon was Boys Don't Cry by Fina Scarlet. Please only pick this book up if you feel emotionally stable and sturdy. It's very emotionally impactful. It deals with some very difficult topics. This book really explores masculinity and male relationships. There are two brothers at the center of this story. And this book also very heavily deals with the impact of illness and grief. And it takes a look at this idea that men shouldn't display emotion. One of the really powerful things about this book is Finn seeing his dad cry and his father doesn't think that Finn has seen him go through this display of emotion and sadness but he has. There's really simple storytelling in this but in a way that is very impactful and I think what I was hugely impressed by with Venus Scarlet's writing was the sense of place and community that she depicted so it's something that Roddy Doyle does really well in his books is giving a place a sense of community and character by really including including a Dublin dialect or like Dublinese to really ground these characters in where they are. And Fina Scarlet does that in this book in a way that really connects me to Dublin, which is the place I'm from. It's a difficult book, but one that 
is hugely impactful. Promising Young Women by Caroline O'Donoghue. So you've probably heard me talk about Caroline O'Donoghue a lot on the channel before, and she is certainly one of those writers that I consider to be really part of that boom in interest in Irish women's fiction. She's written a number of books, including The Rachel Incident, which is our group read this year. But I wanted to take a moment to just talk about Promising Young Women, which I think was her debut novel. It was my first introduction to Caroline's writing and it was my favourite book in the year that I read it. This book follows Jane, who is an adrift woman in her 20s. She works in an office and one day at an office party, she assumes the role of the other woman. She begins to have an affair with her married and much older boss. And it is through that relationship that she begins to understand that real link between sex and authority and power and when how all of those things are in the one relationship and being played with in the one relationship, it can have really bad consequences, particularly if you are the younger person in that relationship. It explores what it feels like to be someone's dirty little secret and how that can really have terrible impacts for your sense of self, your mental health, and we find our main character turning to unhealthy coping mechanisms in this book. There are negative effects of this relationship in so many different areas of her life. Of course, her work life, her professional life is significantly impacted. And it was so infuriating to see how this older authority figure manipulated the situation. So he faced no negative consequences for his irresponsible actions. It impacts Jane's friendships and her sanity begins to weaken. There are lots of books out there and I love many of them that depict that 20 something experience of being a woman in London. And many of those books do deal with heavier topics, but do have a more light-hearted focus on dating and friendships and that kind of thing. This book, I honestly think is like a tour de force in terms of truly depicting how difficult some of those relationship dynamics and how damaging some of those re relationship dynamics can be. I actually haven't reread this since I first read it in, I think, 2020, but I think about it all of the time. I really should reread this one. Now, Vendetta by Catherine Doyle is one that I've only read very recently and I haven't even wrapped this up in a review yet, but I think this is so underrated. This is the first book in the Blood for Blood series, which is a mafia romance series, and we are following our main character, Sophie, trying to get through life, trying to make ends meet after her father has been sent to jail for murder. But we definitely get a sense that Sophie doesn't really understand exactly what, what went on with her father's sentencing, with the crime he committed. Like she's been kept in the dark about a lot of stuff. Then a new family move into the community and they are a family of five brothers. And Sophie strikes up a connection with one of the brothers in particular. There's a lot of really sus stuff going on with these brothers as well. Like some of them seem to have like real attitude problems. And Sophie just kind of dismisses a lot of these suspicious activities as just like complicated family dynamics. And I guess in some ways they are, but she's just really focused on her connection with this one brother in particular. However, that becomes even more complicated when they realize who each other are. He realizes who Sophie's dad is and she realizes that they are the Falcone family. And this is a mafia romance. And I've not read anything like that before. I've never read a mafia romance until I picked this one up. It is YA, but I think even as an older reader, you can get a lot from this. And I just found the chemistry between the two main characters really compelling and entertaining. There are lots of different metrics that I kind of look at books against when I'm deciding if it's something that is like, a favorite or a five star or that kind of thing. But one of the main metrics that I measure things against was like, was this good vibes? Did I have fun? And I had so much fun reading this book. In fact, I immediately went and bought the second book in the series because I was like, I can't wait. I need to get this now. And the final book I want to talk about today is Fling by Joseph Murray. So this is just a proof copy. I probably should replace this with a finished copy. The concept for this is just so much fun. So this is about a married couple in their mid thirties and their relationship is just a real strain. It's really difficult at the minute. They are arguing so much. They are snipping at each other. They are finding so much about each other 
frustrating and their relationship is massively on the rocks which is just such a shame to see because you do get looks at the early days of their relationship and how they were just like so into each other and this great relationship because they're in their mid-30s and when they got together they kind of missed the real like dating app boom but it is then that they both hear about this app called fling which has been specifically designed for people who want to have affairs. So your profile on this app is really anonymized. People use like fake names and that sort of thing. So it's all set up so that you can be like dishonest with your partner and start an affair with someone else. And both of our main characters sign up for this app and who do they end up connecting with? Each other, but they have no idea that it is each other. And they become like obsessed with this other person. Like they are so into them. They are like, yes, this person is giving me all of the stuff that my marriage is lacking but it's each other and i just think that setup is so entertaining <laughs> and it's just kind of funny how like neither of them can be like mad at each other because they're doing the same thing <laughs> and i think it's also a really valuable lesson in that if you have this really long-term relationship that is going through difficulties and i thought it was really um important for the discussions around ivf and how failed ivf attempts can impact a marriage and be really difficult for a marriage i think it goes to show that you can find the spark and the chemistry in your relationship again this is another one of those books where i was just like this is thoroughly entertaining so that is it they are all those books i'm going to talk about today are you reading anything for the irish readathon at the minute leave me a comment down below and let me know are there any books you would like to recommend to me irish or otherwise and if you don't have anything in particular to say but you'd like to let me know you're here please leave me the green heart emoji. That is it for me today. I hope you're doing well and I will speak to you in my next video.